To create a new folder in Windows, I would like to take you through the following simple steps. I will show you how to create a new folder on your desktop. On a clear space on your desktop, right click, choose New, and Folder. Name your folder, and then press Enter on the keyboard to accept the changes. You have successfully created a new folder on your desktop. Should you change your mind and like to rename your folder, this can easily be done by right-clicking on the folder and selecting Rename. You can then rename your folder with the new name and then again selecting Enter on your keyboard to accept the changes. You have now successfully created a folder and have renamed it. Now that we have created a new folder in the course, let's practice getting organized and talk about the importance of organization. Let's go ahead and double click to open our new folder and create six weeks of folders for our assignments. Let's keep in mind it is very important to always name your folders with the simplest and shortest name possible. Be sure to never use special characters such as the pound sign or quotation marks. However, a dash or underscore is perfectly acceptable. The key ingredients to sanity with naming files and folders is to keep it short and sweet as well as being consistent. Examples of acceptable weekly folders names could be the following. Let's go ahead and right click and do the same thing that we just did to create our folder on our desktop. It is the same thing to create a folder inside a new folder by going to New and Folder. So an example for this folder could be Week 1, hitting Enter again to accept the name. Again, New and Folder. You could call this one Week 1 with no space. You could come up to File this way and select new and folder. You could call this one week with a space and one. Again hitting enter. New folder. You could call this one week. Now you can use here an underscore with one and hitting enter. Again week week one this time you can here use a dash and one and hitting enter however you choose remember to be consistent throughout your directory structure let's create a new folder in my documents the same way we did on our desktop by going to the start menu and selecting My Documents. You may have a shortcut for My Documents on your desktop. Here in My Documents, we would create a folder the same way by going New and Folder. Here, we're going to name our folder AIPO for the Art Institute of Pittsburgh Online. Naming your folder out all six words would not be acceptable, so the acronym for the school is best. After your new AIPO folder is created, let's go ahead and open it. So we can open this folder by double clicking, and you can see that the contents of this folder is empty. So I'm going to take my folder, and I'm going to take the contents of my CPU 101 folder, which we created on our desktop, and we're going to move our contents into our new created folder for AIPO. So we can see our six folders in CPU 101, and we're going to move that into our newly created AIPO folder in My Documents. This can be done one of three ways. You can drag and drop your folder, by taking your CPU 101 folder from the desktop and dragging it into your AIPO folder in My Documents. You can select by clicking on your CPU 101 folder and right clicking and choosing Cut, or you can cut 
using the keyboard shortcut on your keyboard by control and X and you can by doing control X you will see that your folder will dim and then you can come into your AIPO folder by clicking you will see that once you click in your AIPO folder the top bar will then become blue showing you that it is active you can then either edit and paste or you can use the keyboard shortcut control V for Victor and your CPU 101 folder has now moved into your AIPO folder. You can see that it has deleted from the desktop and moved into your AIPO folder. Now the third way that you can move your CPU 101 folder into your AIPO folder is by copying. Now copying is not recommended since you will end up with two copies of your CPU 101 folder. So this, so copying is not recommended. Now you can see by copying, you now have two copies of your AIPO folder and you would have to take the copy on your desktop and move it to the recycle bin. So this way is not recommended. When you have two copies of a file or folder that you would like to delete, don't forget that when you delete a folder and send its contents to the recycle bin, all of the contents within that folder is also deleted as well. You can delete files and folders two ways. You can right click and choose delete in the pop-up menu or you can simply drag your folder directly to the recycle bin. Should you choose delete from the pop-up menu you will then see this option to confirm folder delete now once you choose yes or no from this message you can confirm to delete and once you do that all of your contents from that folder everything in that folder will then move to the recycle bin now once you do that one fail safe method is if I would use Control Z on my keyboard, it is the undo option. You also have edit undo as a fail safe if you should happen to send something to the recycle bin that you did not want to send there. Now, please keep in mind that once you empty the recycle bin, your files and folders are gone forever. There is no way to recover them. But if you send something to the recycle bin and it has not been emptied, usually only if it is the last action are you able to undo. So the last thing that we want to do now that we've moved our CPU 101 folder to our AIPO folder is let's go inside our CPU 101 folder and take a look at our six folders that we have named week one six different ways. So going back to being consistent with our folders, we have six different ways of naming our folders. Being consistent, remember, is key to Sandy with naming files and folders. So we need to choose a way that we want to be consistent with naming. So I like no spaces, no underscores with naming conventions. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rename the rest of my folders to be consistent and follow the same way with the rest of my folders. And we need one more folder to make number six. Just to recap what we've just done, you've created a folder on your desktop, created six subfolders, you've created a folder in My Documents, you've moved the contents of a folder several ways, we've discussed deleting files and folders, and overall you've created a hierarchy of structure for your files and folders.